Welcome to Ready Steady Eat. In this session, we'll be talking you through introducing solid foods to your baby, sharing top tips and giving some hopefully useful resources for you to try. The first question to answer for many parents is when do I start introducing solid food? There is so much information available online and well-meaning friends and family can also be keen to offer advice. Taken with many few companies that advertise their food as suitable from four months old, it can be really confusing to know what you should do. In the UK, the current guidance that we have is to introduce solid food from around six months old. Until this age, babies should be exclusively breast or formula fed before the gradual introduction of solid foods from six months. This means that when your baby first starts having solid food, they will still be having their usual milk feeds too. We've said that babies are ready to start solid food from around six months, so you're probably wondering what around six months exactly means. All babies develop at their own pace and are all slightly different, but there are some key signs that may appear when your baby is ready to start solid food. The three key signs to look out for are being able to sit and hold their head steady. Your baby's back can be supported by a high chair, but they should be able to easily hold their body and head upright as well. They should also be able to coordinate their eyes, hands and mouth, and they should also be able to swallow food. Babies who are not ready will simply spit their food back out. Other developmental signs, such as chewing their fists, showing interest in food that you might be having, changes to their sleeping pattern and wanting extra milk feeds may also occur around this age, but they do not indicate your baby is ready for solid food on their own. It is rare for these signs to appear much before six months, but all babies are different and some may show these signs slightly earlier and some slightly later. This is why the guidance says around six months. It's really important to pay attention to your baby developing these signs for readiness rather than going by their age alone. It is important to remember that you should look for these signs to occur on multiple occasions rather than just one instance, and they should all occur at the same time. Even when your baby starts solid foods, they will still be continuing with their usual milk feeds, which will gradually decrease over time as their intake of solid food increases. If you are breastfeeding, you can continue to do this for as long as you would like to. If you are using formula milk, you can continue to use first infant formula even from 6 months and up until 12 months. Follow on milks, hungry baby milks, comfort and good night milks are not needed at any age. After 12 months, you can move on to giving either whole cow's milk or an unsweetened fortified milk alternative. Even though babies cannot have cow's milk as their drink until they are 12 months old, you can use whole cow's milk or a non-dairy alternative if needed when preparing your solid food. If you are using formula, did you know that the content of infant first formula is regulated? This means that all infant first formula has to meet the same compositional requirements regardless of whether it is a branded or supermarket owned product. This means that the branded formula milks, which are often much more expensive, are not necessarily nutritionally superior at all. It may be tempting to try and introduce solid food to your baby before they are six months old, but you should get advice from your GP or health visitor before you think about doing this. Waiting until six months means it, means it will be so much easier for your baby to start having solid food. It will be easier for them to chew and to swallow, and they may even have teeth starting to come through as well. There is evidence that waiting until six months can also reduce the risk of developing any gastrointestinal or tummy infections, and also reduce the risk of developing respiratory infections in the airway. There is no evidence that introducing solid foods earlier reduces the risk of developing allergies. Waiting until six months also means that your baby can experience a broader variety of different textures sooner and can progress onto meals quicker. Starting solid food is all about experimenting and having fun. It's an opportunity to let your baby explore new tastes and textures. You can offer food to your baby using a spoon-led method, a baby-led method, or a mixture of both, which in reality is what most parents do. Spoon-led is where your baby learns to spoon-feed with mashed foods. Baby-led is where your baby will feed themselves using specially prepared finger foods. Most importantly, you should do what feels right for you and for your baby. 
When introduced at the right time though, both are considered to be safe methods and your baby will get the nutrients they need from either option. Generally speaking, if you start by offering purees to your baby, try to progress quickly onto mash food so your baby can experience a variety of textures and develop chewing skills. Purees are very, very smooth, almost a liquid in consistency, which means these can be swallowed automatically and your baby is not developing skills needed to eat by only having these. You can also offer sticks of food to your baby alongside or instead of mashed foods. These should be prepared to about the size of your little finger so your baby can easily hold one end whilst eating the other. Food should be soft cooked and small round foods such as cherry tomatoes, grapes and large beans should be cut into quarters lengthways to minimise the risk of choking as much as possible. The skin should also be removed from fruit and vegetables and also from sausages which should also be cut up lengthways. Small soft fruits such as blueberries should be chopped or squashed and hard cheese should be grated. Knowing how to offer solid food safely can be worrying for many parents and there are some great resources that exist to make this process much much easier. Take a look at our resources linked at the end of this session which can offer you some more guidance on preparing food safely. If possible try to offer home prepared food as much as you can and include a wide variety of different foods. The first taste that you offer your baby can be lumpy mashed or soft cooked sticks of vegetables. It's a good idea to introduce vegetables as your baby's first foods or really early on as it helps to develop enjoyment and tolerance of savoury and bitter flavours. In particular, vegetables such as broccoli, cauliflower, green beans, courgette, cucumber and spinach are great options to offer. Babies have an inbuilt preference for sweet foods so introducing the more bitter vegetables will increase the likelihood of accepting a wider range of foods as they progress with their eating. Rather than starting off with very sweet fruit and vegetables such as carrots, sweet potatoes and parsnips. Although the baby food you might see in the shops often combine multiple ingredients, when you first start offering solid foods it's recommended to offer one food at a time. Combining lots of different ingredients can make it difficult for your baby to distinguish and recognise individual flavours and textures, which can sometimes lead to rejection of these foods later on. Remember as well that babies can often make a grimacing face when they try new and unfamiliar foods, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they don't like something, so it's always worth persevering. After your baby has started to get the hang of trying new foods, it's really important to progress onto offering food from all the different food groups to make sure they get the nutrients that they need. The first group is starchy foods, which includes foods such as pasta, rice and bread. This group is an excellent source of energy, fibre, vitamins and minerals. You should start by offering products which are made with white flour, such as white bread, and then progress to offer a mixture of whole grain and white flour products. Do not only offer whole grain products only to young babies as this can sometimes be too much for the baby's digestive system to take. The second group are fruits and vegetables which you'll probably really quickly become established in offering a variety. Try and think of it as a rainbow of colours. This will mean that your baby is getting a wide variety of different tastes, including those which are sweet, savoury and bitter. And it will also mean they're getting a really wide range of nutrients too, as different colours tend to have a different nutrient profile. Thirdly, the protein foods group, which include things such as lentils, beans, meat, fish, eggs and nut butters too. Proteins are essential for growth and repair and are a really important source of iron to your baby, which needs to be included in their diet after they're six months old. The final group is dairy foods, such as cheese and yogurt or fortified dairy alternatives, which are a great source of calcium, important for strong teeth and bones. Remember that until babies are two, they must have full fat versions of dairy products, so full fat yogurt, full fat cheese, full fat milk, as this fat is an essential nutrient in their diet for healthy development. Try not to worry too much about achieving a perfect balance on a day to day basis, as it's completely normal for your baby's appetite to vary. 
Instead, look at what you're offering and what your baby is eating over a week long period. Over time, your baby will be able to progress onto small portions of your family meals. Just remember not to add any sugar or salt before you have removed a portion for your baby. To be healthy, it's really important that we have moderation and balance and we do not need to cut out any food or food group in its entirety. But free sugar, which is also known as added sugar, is something that we need to be a bit mindful of and it should not be a significant part of your baby's diet. Having too much added sugar can be bad for our health and it's also a significant contributor to tooth decay. In the UK, there are recommended daily maximums for added sugar based on different age groups. As you can see on the screen, babies and children under four years old are meant to have as little added sugar in their diet as possible. Children aged between four and six years should have a maximum of 19 grams per day or about five sugar cubes or five teaspoons. Children aged between seven and 10 should have a maximum of 24 grams or about six sugar cubes. And adults and children aged over 11 should have a maximum of 30 grams per day or about seven sugar cubes. It's estimated, however, though, that on average in all age groups, we consume about double the amount that is recommended, with children aged between 18 months and three years having about the amount that is recommended as a maximum for an adult. Sometimes sugar can be hidden in things that you wouldn't necessarily expect, um, which can make it really easy to consume more than you think. And this can often be the case in food and drinks that are specifically aimed at babies and young children even in things such as flavoured yoghurt, juices and breakfast cereal. The free or added sugar is not only in the form of sugar we would expect, so the white powder or granules, but also includes sugar in honey, syrups, fruit and vegetable juices, smoothies and purees. It doesn't include the sugar found in whole fruit and vegetables, milk or those that come from starchy carbohydrates though as these do not have a negative impact on our health and they also include really important nutrients and fibre, so you don't need to worry about these. You may be wondering why fruit juices, purees and smoothies are said to contain free sugar when these products come from fruit which is natural, but when fruit is turned into a juice or puree, the sugar is released from the cell and so they become free. The fibre is also lost and it's really easy to, co to consume a lot of free sugar when it's in liquid form. Remember not to add sugar to food you prepare for your baby. And if you are choosing pre-prepared food from a supermarket, try to make sure it has as little added sugar as possible, which may mean you need to compare brands. If you can, making your own food for your baby means it's easy to know exactly what they're eating. But there are some easy swaps you can make for the times when you need to buy shop bought food. This means that your baby will be consuming less sugar by making these swaps. Here are a few examples of things that you can try. Juices and flavoured drinks often aimed at babies can contain added sugar, even if this is said to come from natural sources. Try swapping to sips of plain water instead, which they can have alongside their food and in addition to their main milk drink. For babies over six months old, tap water is absolutely fine. Instead of offering purees from pouches, try offering cut up slices of fruit instead. Your baby will get more fibre by consuming it this way and this is less damaging for their teeth. If you are looking for a topping to add into porridge or to spread onto toast, instead of offering jam, which is entirely comprised of sugar, try offering a smooth peanut butter instead. Peanut butter is an excellent source of protein and fat. Just remember to check the label to make sure it does not have added sugar or salt. Barley's rust used to be given to babies all the time as one of their first foods. But did you know they actually have double the amount of sugar as a digestive biscuit? Try offering a different snack, such as a plain rice cake or toast instead. Yogurt is an excellent source of calcium and fat for babies, but the flavoured kind can be really high in sugar. Again, even the ones that are specifically marketed for babies and young children. Instead, Offer your baby a full fat, natural or Greek yoghurt, 
which you can always flavour yourself with mashed up fruits. Finally, baby rice is another food that is really commonly offered as a first food, but you can create something at home really similar by using something such as ready brek, which generally has the same consistency. It also has no added sugar and is fortified with vitamins and minerals. You can flavour it yourself if you want to by adding mashed banana or mashed berries to make it extra tasty and nutritious. Once you and your baby have got going with solid foods, there isn't too much that you need to worry about avoiding and you can experiment and have lots of fun with lots of different foods. There are a few things though that babies can't have until they're a little bit older, so it's important just to remember these. These include large fish such as shark, swordfish and marlin, which should be avoided due to the large amounts of mercury that can be found in the fish, which can affect the development of your baby's nervous system. Other large fish, such as tuna, are fine to include in your baby's diet in moderation. Mold ripened and blue vein cheeses, such as brie, camembert or roquefort, should be avoided as these can contain bacteria that can make babies unwell. It's safe to offer unsweetened and fortified milk alternatives, but rice milk should be completely avoided until your baby is five years old. This is because rice milk can contain traces of arsenic, which are deemed safe for older children and adults to consume. But because of the amount of milk babies and toddlers drink relative to their size, this can put them at risk of consuming unsafe amounts. Whole nuts and other similar sized food items should be avoided as they are a choking risk. Instead, you should offer smooth nut butters and other small items of a similar size, such as blueberries, should be mashed or squashed down. Honey should be avoided until babies are 12 months old, as it can contain bacteria that causes an illness called infant botulism, a rare but potentially fatal illness of the digestive system. Raw shellfish can contain harmful bacteria that can make babies poorly, so if you want to offer shellfish, always make sure it's cooked through. Tea, coffee, energy drinks or any other drinks containing caffeine or any other stimulants such as Coca-Cola should also be avoided. Water and your baby's milk drink are the only drinks they should be having. Allergies are one of the most common worries when introducing solid food to your baby. There are 14 allergens to be aware of, but it is okay to introduce these foods in small amounts from six months old, just like any other food. They should be introduced one at a time in very small amounts and try to allow at least a few days between introducing different allergens, as this will make it easier to work out what your baby has reacted to if they have a reaction. Once you have introduced these foods, if your baby tolerates them, then make sure you include them as part of their usual diet to minimise the risk of an allergy developing. If your baby already has a diagnosed food allergy or there is a family history of allergies, you should talk to your GP or health visitor before introducing these foods. With both peanuts and eggs specifically, there is actually evidence that suggests delaying introduction of these foods beyond 12 months can increase the risk of developing an allergy. Understandably, many parents can feel anxious when introducing solid food to their baby, but there are some important safety precautions to take to minimise the risk of choking. It's essential you stay with your baby at all times whilst they are eating, and when they are eating they should be strapped securely into a high chair. To minimise the risk of choking, it is important that food is prepared correctly and appropriately. Hard foods such as carrots, parsnips, broccoli, apple and pear should be peeled and soft cooked before being either mashed or given as a finger food to babies. Hard pips or stones should also be removed. Round foods such as grapes and cherry tomatoes should be cut into quarters and even smaller round foods such as blueberries should be squashed or mashed. Whole nuts and peanuts should be avoided completely and offered in the form of smooth nut butters instead. Sausages should be cut lengthways and have their skin removed and it's important to make sure all bones are removed from meat and fish. Another aspect to think about is food hygiene in general as babies and young children are particularly vulnerable to the bacteria that can cause food poisoning. Ensure you prepare all foods safely and hygienically by using different chopping boards for different food types 
and make sure cooked food that has been cooled is piping hot through before cooling again slightly to eat. Be sure to wipe down food preparation surfaces and wash utensils and cutlery thoroughly. Gagging is a really common issue experienced by babies when solid food is first introduced. Babies can gag for many different reasons. It could be that the food is cold, they have too much in their mouth or they don't like what they're eating. It can be worrying if your baby gagged, but it's a very natural reflex and an important safety mechanism that helps to keep their airway safe. If your baby gags, their tongue may thrust forward and you may hear spluttering, coughing and gagging sounds. Choking is different to gagging and this is when something is completely blocking the baby's airway. If a baby starts to choke, they may be very quiet or completely silent and they may have an ineffective cough or be unable to cough at all. If this happens, you must start the choking baby sequence and call for help immediately. The choking baby sequence can be found on the resources page at the end of this session and the British Red Cross also have a free baby and child first aid app containing lots of helpful information about choking and other issues which we really recommend you download. Some parents also choose to take a paediatric first aid course either before or once their baby starts solid food. These are available in your local area across Cornwall. We can get most of the nutrients we need from eating a varied and balanced diet, but it's really difficult for us to consume enough vitamin D through diet alone. And in the UK, particularly between October and April, it's difficult for us to meet the necessary requirements due to the lack of sunlight as well. It's therefore really important that everyone, and not just babies, takes a vitamin D supplement every day. Vitamin D helps to absorb calcium and is important for maintaining healthy teeth and bones and to prevent rickets. We should take a 10 microgram supplement each day. For babies, this is available in the form of vitamin drops, which you can purchase from a pharmacy or supermarket. They usually come in a multivitamin with vitamins A, C and D. Formula milk is already supplemented with vitamin D, so you don't need to worry about giving your baby a supplement until they are having less than 500 mils of formula per day. You may have heard of a scheme called Healthy Start, which is a means tested scheme available for pregnant women and families with young children. It means you could be eligible to receive vouchers to spend on plain cow's milk, fresh and frozen fruit and veg and first infant formula too. You also receive coupons for free vitamins for you and your baby. You may be eligible for Healthy Start if you or your family get income support, income based job seekers allowance, income related employment and support allowance, child tax credit, pension credit or universal credit. If you think you may be eligible, speak to your midwife, health visitor or GP about the scheme and they'll be able to provide you with an application form or take a look at the Healthy Start website which is linked on the resources page at the end of this session to find out more information and to download an application form. We can't really talk about food and drink without also starting to think about dental hygiene as now is the time when your baby may start to have teeth coming through as well. In Cornwall, the highest single cause for hospital admissions in children is tooth extraction under general anaesthetic. Most cases are completely avoidable with the correct dental hygiene. So what can be done to look after your baby's teeth? You can start brushing your baby's teeth as soon as they come through using a tiny smear of toothpaste and a baby toothbrush. It's important to do this even if there's just one. This not only helps to start protecting the tooth straight away, but it also helps your baby get into the habit of having their teeth cleaned. Try to use an open cup or free flow cup for water rather than a bottle or beaker. This means your baby will learn to sip rather than suck their drinks. Sucking from a bottle means that the drink has more contact time with the baby's teeth, which can lead to tooth decay. If you need to use pre-prepared baby food, do not let your baby suck directly from food pouches. Not only does this not encourage the development of chewing skills, but the purees contained in these pouches can be particularly high in free sugars and have higher contact time with the teeth. 
If you want to include dried fruit as part of your baby's diet, make sure this is given at meal times rather than in between as a snack. The sugar is very concentrated and can leave a sticky coating on teeth. Offering it as part of a meal can help prevent the damage from occurring. You should also take your baby to the dentist when their first milk teeth start to appear. This will enable to make sure that their teeth are developing properly, but will also mean that they get used to being in the dentist chair. It's really common to feel anxious or worried around the time of introducing solid food to your baby. It's completely normal and you'll not be alone if you feel like this. If you have any concerns about how you or your partner or anyone in your family are feeling, please don't struggle alone. Talk to someone you can trust, speak with your health visitor or GP, or contact us with your questions and we'll be happy to help you where we can. Linked here are some of the most useful resources to have a look at when you're introducing solid food to your baby. Start for Life is from Change for Life and is a great source of information on feeding your little one. It includes recipe ideas, tips on preparing food and videos such as the two linked here which show you how to introduce solid food and give you some ideas of what you can introduce. First Steps Nutrition is a really comprehensive resource with information on all things nutrition from pregnancy through to the early years. Real Baby Milk is a brilliant guide to all things breastfeeding, but also covers other aspects of infant care and feeding. How to brush your child's teeth is a really informative video from the NHS, which really clearly shows you how to brush your baby's teeth when they're very young. The Healthy Start website is linked here, which provides all information about the scheme, the eligibility criteria and an online application form. It also lists local re retailers where you can exchange the vouchers for food and you can also find out which pharmacies you can get the vitamins from. The British Red Cross app is free to download on Apple and Android and is a great resource to have access to when you're thinking of introducing solid food. The British Red Cross Choking Baby Sequence is linked here and it's well worth making yourself and family members aware before you start solid food. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our Ready Steady Eat session. If you have any questions or would like more information, please feel free to get in contact with us, the Healthy Under 5 team at Healthy Cornwall. You can contact us via email, which is healthyunderfives at cornwall.gov.uk or by telephone, which is 01209 615 600.